Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Rob Cohey, Technical Evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing and we're on the lesson two of making the most of your 30-day trial with Autodesk Inventor. So like I said at the outset of the last tutorial that we went through, um, hopefully everybody's taken advantage already then of the tutorial learning resource that's right inside of Autodesk Inventor. I mentioned the importance about having an understanding of project files, the navigation tools, some sketching, and then you know your last assignment, if you will, was to go through parts one and two, which is going to lead us into assemblies. And before you start on assemblies, I want to go through a little, uh, a little, little tutorial, my take, if you will, on some of the best practices for bringing components together into an assembly and generating the relationships between the components so that they are oriented correctly, they're where they need to be in the, uh, uh, in this, in the assembly, and even, even build some, you have the ability to generate working relationships between components, some cause and effect types of things. So if this spins over here, hey, guess what? This thing spins over here as well. So um, what I'll do is I'm gonna bring up a real simple example so that we can get a good understanding of constraints and orienting components relative to other components, which seems to be, uh, based on my experience, the, one of the biggest stumbling blocks for new users to 3D. So let's see if we can't kind of smooth out that, uh, that, that learning curve, if you will. So as I mentioned before, all of the example files that I'm going to use are going to be based upon the metric tab in your new file dialog box. So when you say file new and uh, go to the metric tab, what I'm gonna do is start a standard millimeter dot IAM. Now the IAM, as opposed to the IPT, the IAM is the assembly environment. Now we talked a little bit about in the previous example about the sketching environment that's inside of a part environment and then the part environment itself. All of those are hosted inside the IPT. Now inside of an IAM file, which is the assembly file, that's when you bring in all of your IPT files to build the working relationships between the components um, and, uh, and really build out your assembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a uh, standard millimeter assembly file. Now, there's a couple of ways to place content inside of an assembly. I could, I could go about creating a new uh, part file if I ch so choose, um, right here within the context of the assembly, and many people do that. And, and in fact, I would, I would say that as more advanced as you get with, uh, with Inventor, um, the more you'll find yourself modeling parts while you actually have an assembly open, uh, which you, know, you absolutely have that uh, capability. But I'm going to go ahead and play some parts that already exist. I really want to focus this lesson in and around um, building out these um, uh, building out these uh, relationships between the components and orientation and such. Because, like I said, that seems to be the biggest stumbling block. So inside of your tutorial project file, which if you went through the tutorials as I suggested, um, you have your tutorial project file active which gives me access to uh, a folder called assembly FEA2. And this is the uh, example files that I'm going to use. It's a bracket assembly. Um, and if you click on the bracket assembly, you'll see the preview inside your dialog box there. And we're gonna go ahead and assemble that. But rather than using the, uh, the bolt and washer and nut that come with that assembly, I'm gonna show you a little trick um, that I think will speed up your, um, uh, certainly your fastener placement inside of Autodesk Inventor. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the mount. Now, it's really important when you're going through and setting up your assemblies to determine which component's going to be your base component. Because as we learned in the previous example, when you start a new part file, Inventor creates the default uh, work planes and work axes and orientation um, for you. Well, when you bring in your base component into an assembly, two things happen. The assembly inherits the origin of your base component. So the first one you bring in is going to be your base component. And another thing that happens is uh, it's grounded. Now what grounded means inside of Autodesk Inventor is that all degrees of freedom have been removed. Now a lot of people like to ground multiple components inside of an assembly. I consider that cheating to an extent, um, but at the same time sometimes cheating is useful. Um, you can bring those in uh, and uh, you can do what's called a place and ground um, if you uh, um, if you align origins together relative to each other. So there is a technique where that's useful, but for, I would say for beginner modelers, let's understand the fundamentals behind constraining before we go about grounding everything in our assembly. All right, well, if we take a look at the finished example, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the finished example so you can have a look at that. As you can see, the orientation of this is um, not necessarily 
the orientation of the, an isometric view inside of my example. So it's kind of, it's upright. This happens a lot. This happens quite a bit. But there's nothing really to, uh, to, to, to really get too flustered about. It's just a matter of, of preferences, user preference. Now what I like to do is uh, I like to rotate this thing around to about where I want to be a isometric home view. And once I have its orientation where I want it to be, I'll go ahead and click an exact isometric view with my view cube. And then I'll right click on the home view, set current view, uh, set current view as home. And of course, I'll set it to fit to view so that it automatically adjusts as I add components to this. So I now have a redefined home view. And maybe this view or most likely this one is probably going to be my new front view. Because as we, as we learned in the last uh, example, you know, going to the view tab, I can turn on some shadows, I can turn on a reflection, maybe go into, in, into a perspective view, because I'd really prefer this to, to, to be a little bit more realistic as I'm working on it, um, just because I think it's cool. <laughs> so, uh, you know, maybe just ambient shadows for this example is something that I want to go ahead and enable. So, all right, good to go. Now, another thing that, that some people prefer is to change your visual style. Now, we have multiple visual styles here inside of Autodesk Inventor, and um, the one that I like to use most often while I'm working is shaded with edges so that I can see the actual geometric edges of the parts that I'm working on. It kind of helps me while I'm uh, positioning components and so forth.